Hey everybody, it's Brian here from quantlabs.net. I'm gonna try my best to show you how I plan to attack pairs trading with MATLAB and my .NET custom trading platform. And all the source code and all this stuff, uh, I'm gonna reveal, I'm gonna do a quick code review of the MATLAB script, where to get all this stuff from and how to implement it into a potentially live trading platform. Now, that's what I'm going to do here uh, over the next few segments in this video series show how to do it. Um, now, let's get to the starting point. Now, there's uh, a lot of places you can go. I really like MATLAB a lot, as you know, um, but the one powerful thing I do like about MATLAB are these uh, webinars. This webinar is uh, available for anybody, really, that wants to learn about automated trading. Okay. Um, this leverages off another webinar, but it's about just over an hour long. It's put on by uh, Stuart Cozzola, and uh, you should watch this to really understand the power uh, that uh, MATLAB can bring. Now, a lot of people ask me, do I use this type of system for production or live trading? Absolutely not. Um, just do the fact if you're going to trade minute data, tick data, um, you're going to run into all kinds of problems where uh, MATLAB itself will um, drop uh, ticks and just data. It, it could become unreliable. I'm not saying it will or won't. But it's just something I'm not really comfortable with. It's fine for prototyping and researching with. It's actually the best tool out there. I mean, all the big guys use it. Ernie Chan, Paul Control, part of my community uh, for researching. They don't use R for uh, their own reasons and my own reasons. I'm not getting that. This is all about Paris trading. Okay, so watch this webinar. Uh, and there's a little blurb on there. So when you watch this video, there's a demo in there in demo number five that will do exactly pairs trading. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take you into when you download this code. I'll put the links in somewhere, somewhere, so you can get started. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the source code and uh, where we go. Okay, um, so typically what will happen is you will have your this is now MATLAB 2013A, so people know that. Uh, here's the source code. Um, I'm not going to get into the breakdown of the whole system. Uh, that's what this webinar is for. Uh, this, this full hour, watch it, understand it. Uh, you want to learn about pairs trading. Okay, so let's get to the actual code in MATLAB. Okay, this is the MATLAB script. So again, uh, let me just show you the MATLAB right here. Demo 5 pairs trading. That's what we're going to focus on in any of the uh, MATLAB functions that uh, go with that. Okay, so I'm not going to sit here and spend a lot of time going through it, but I'll just give you the uh, brief highlight of it. Okay, so if I go in the editor, load up this demo 5 pairs trading function. Uh, what we're doing is uh, we're framing or uh, preloading all the data and all the manipulation and all that. So what's going to happen is going to load in uh, a fixed uh, data file, oil data. I'll just show you what it looks like. Oil data. Um, it's under here. The data. Uh, so you get two time series. Uh, we have here, yes, LCO and WTI. Okay, so this is what they are. Typical high low close open and all that that we're all used to. So it's going to grab this one right here, number four, uh, which is the close. Okay, so let's get back to the editor and I'll show you all that in a little bit. So it's going to load in all the data, set them up to the proper time series of LCO, WTI, uh, and does a pairs tray, a pairs chart. So let, let me let me just clear all this stuff in the interpreter and all that. Uh, let me just uh, end the debugging, click debugging. Okay, so I'm going to clear all, and why not just clear the screen gate. Okay, so I'm going to go through the interactive debugger. Now for anybody that is wanting to reverse engineer software, this is a very good way of doing it. Debugger can be your best friend. Even if you don't know anything about programming, this can really help you out. And the other key part for any tip is always use breakpoints. Okay, that's what a little red circle means. So I'm going to run it, and it's just going to... Uh, stop at this point. So I'm going to run it. So that little green arrow means that that execution is stopping right here at the pairs chart. Yeah, yeah that's what we want. 
So you can see in our workspace we have these two time series I just showed you uh, currently in the workspace. So I'm going iter to iteratively step through now the pairs chart. Okay, I'm not going to get into this, but this is what it will generate. So we'll do a step out uh, and uh, it's going to do some calculations now. What did it just do? All right, so a couple of things. Actually, you know what? Mm, might be useful. Uh, yeah, let me, let me just walk you through. So it's going to run this function called pairs, this guy right here. So in the pairs, what we're passing in is the time series, the size, the spread, the scale, cost, and all that, right? Yeah. So um, as we go through this, we set our scaling maybe. What's the cost? What's the spread? What's the uh, size of the time series, um, turn off certain warnings, too small, too big, blah, 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 blah. I'm not getting, uh, believe me, in the, uh, this is one thing, another big thing for people that are doing open source projects. Look at the code or the comments. I firmly believe in this stuff because if you're trying to reverse engineer it, you can't understand these comments. Your code is useless. It's crap. It's garbage. Throw it out. Don't be a programmer for friggin' sakes. People may need to read this stuff, and um, it's very helpful. It's breadcrumbs so people can understand what you're trying to do. These kind of um, comments are really important. So as you can see, the comments are important. I can instantly figure out what they're doing. Um, so uh, like I said, I'm just giving you a real uh, fast overview of this. The webinar probably goes in more detail. Um, and then this is in the pairs trading, sorry, in the pairs uh, function here. So it's setting up all this data, and then what we're doing is we're going to set up uh, some more time series stuff, an indicator, uh, a signal, the S. I'm going to iterate through the size of that M and N dimension, right? Yeah. I'm going to do some try catches. Uh, then it's going to ask if there is a null hypothesis. Is this not a null hypothesis? Then it's going to continue doing the loop, okay? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to calculate this residual stuff, which is really the juice of what makes the signal uh, useful to see if those those that times those two time series are co-integrating. These two right here, yeah, okay. So that's the whole essence of it. Now, uh, let me just give you a little more a better tip about MATLAB itself. Let's say you don't know what, I don't know, um, what this stuff is, I guess. Makes sense. Um, so, as I said, um, let's give you a little hint here. Come sum. Okay, so if I do a search Call that on MATLAB cum sum. What I'll load up is what I want. Boom! Awesome documentation. Of course, you can get that iteratively within the uh, the uh, session of the MATLAB command line here. But I don't do that because I like to use my browser. But anyways, that's just me. But lots of things. So what we're doing here, again, coming back to this, is we're doing some calculations, da 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 da, manipulating time series and coefficients and um, so on and so forth. Okay. Now this is the key right here. This guy right here. What does this do? This is going to use the Engel Granger test to see if these two time series actually are co-integrating. Power of math. But this is the easy stuff. Okay. So if I'm gonna do a search on EGCI test, it's going to use the, uh, as I said, the Engel Granger co integration test. Okay. Now, I've been programming for a while and I like the old school documentation. You know, this is quite good actually. It gives me the input, the parameters, the output, and a really good description of what they do. Now, that's how Microsoft does it. That's how, um, MATLAB or MathWorks does it for MATLAB. Great, I enjoy it. I get I farther, uh, faster, get stuff done quicker. Good luck in reading open source stuff because the documentation is nowhere as good or as slick. You spend more of your time just friggin' trying to go on an Easter egg hunt, which is really 
a useless just to save money? Come on. Dumb, 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 dumb. Anyways, let's talk about what are our output arguments. Okay, so how do I know what I'm looking for? As you can see, there's this reg2 regression statistics. And what we're looking for are the RMSE, the standard error of this regression. That tells you some really interesting things. So again, I'm not going to get into this stuff, but you'll see in here somewhere, there you go, RMSE, RMSE. This tells you, hey, are you more than the spread? Boom, are you less than the spread? Then it generates a signal from that. Pretty cool, eh? Um, and that's that's MATLAB at power, okay? Matrixes, that's the very powerful thing about MATLAB. All right, so it does some PNL. Personally, I don't really care about this stuff because, hell, all I care about is just the trading signal. The, 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 the trading signal that's gonna tell me yes, no, go in, go out, boom, boom, boom. Until then, all this PNL is useless to me because uh, this is just assumptions. Uh, and my C-sharp trading model will show that or do all these calculations for you. Or again, I can call these separately and do all that for me or whatever, but I'm not too worried about that. All I care about is just getting to the point of generating trading signals and after that, make the trading decision. Do I enter the market? Do I get out of the market? So on and so forth. So in essence, this is what this uh, pairs function does. Okay, I've gone on about it long enough and rambled on. Let's see what it generates. So let me just close this puppy. So here's all the uh, returning um, uh, data. Again, remember there's regression one, all that stuff, uh, statisticals, and here's the um, calculation on the RMSE. Okay. Um, and uh, pretty cool. Okay. Uh, so once you run in the demo pair, Demo pair yeah, right here. Uh, where am I running? Okay, well, let me just. Uh, I think we. Where's my little green arrow? You know what? Let's run this again. Because I'm sure you're already confused as it is. And wonderful programming. But I'm just giving you a code, very quick code view of this stuff. Code review. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna continue where we left off. Um, demo point right here. This is loading in the data. Does a pairs chart. I'm gonna run it and see where there's a little green arrow. Step out. Uh, so what I've done in this uh, demos pair trading, I have run or set a breakpoint right here. So what it's gonna do is uh, we left off here running the pairs chart. I don't really care, like I said, about the pairs, the charting at this point. Um, and what it's going to do, once it runs uh, that, it will then figure out a, a new series of two columns, uh, or basically two separate time series and one time series. It's going to just trim and only focus on the LCO last 11 days and the WTI last se 7 days. So after that, it will run that EGCI test that I uh, showed you the uh, documentation for, which is here, EGCI test. Um, here's the time series. We pass in the time series, and all we really care about at this point uh, is just running it, and it's gonna display it, but the resulting is this. When we rerun it, it's basically the same call. This is just for demoing purposes right here, uh, which is really, uh, all this stuff that gets run, okay? So you get an answer, is it null hypothesis uh, in the regression stats, okay? And again, I keep focusing on this one right here, the RMSE, the uh, standard error, uh, and that's calculated within the uh, pairs uh, function I showed earlier. Okay, so um, that's what's run. So, let, so we got our little execution here. Uh, we step out, actually, uh, um, okay, let me just uh, step out. So actually it's going to run this parameter sweep, which at the, even at this point we don't really care about it. Okay, so in our last video segment, uh, we uh, ran this to calculate the time series last 11 days of both LCO 
in the WTI uh, series, just all these calculations on here, 11 days worth of data. Um, and then we're going to run the EGCI test, the Engel Granger test, which is this puppy right here. Again, the documentation is key to all of this, and the style of, and the formatting of this documentation, which makes it easy for people to pick up. So, why is our series? That's what we're sending it, the input, and here's our output. This is what's returned. We have our H, which is our null hypothesis test. And then we have two sets of structures which are really regression tests, our stats. Okay? So again, the one we always focus on is really this RMSE, this guy right here, the standard error. Okay? So what I'm going to do in the editor, I'm going to run it and take it right up to the end. Okay? So what you're going to watch is the EGCI test. It's going to rerun it again, but it's going to return that H and that reg1 stats and just display them and just take it to the edit part pairs okay so let's see what happens here so there we go so let's go to our command line or our command session so here's what's happened we ran it we get an answer back h equals one means it is a null hypothesis that test did pass and we get our, our reg one stats the regression and here's our rmse results okay that's as far as I'm going to take it, and the only reason I'm not taking it any farther is because it starts to do all this wonky parallelization stuff that you don't really need to worry about. But uh, I, I really don't have a high-end uh, GPU board or um, graphical processing unit board, but I could just easily walk you through the code. Now, if you're planning to do this sort of thing for extra speediness, uh, what you can do is with MATLAB, you can in a cool way set up your pool of whatever your hardware has that can be a networked uh, uh, set of servers that are ready to handle a large pool of GPU boards so you can network them together set up your data blah 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 uh, and then do this parameter sweep you set up this uh, callback function and run it so essentially what you're doing is you're going to save yourself a lot of time. You can still use the same functions in this call, uh, but yet just to wrap around some extra code to make it uh, where you can paralyze it. Very cool. I've never seen any piece of code, any language, do it that easily. Um, but uh, and the cool thing about it is in my next video segment, I'm going to deploy this into a .NET uh, NetAssembly or DLL or dynamic link library so my C-sharp um, code can work with it and make calls and that's as the data is coming in from IQ feed runs these set of calculations the one I've shown earlier make a trading decision based upon these code integration tests go yes no maybe and then waits for the next series of ticks or in this case minute bars or maybe five minutes or whatever I decide to throttle it at. But I'm going to set up something and demo that uh, as part of the pairs training. Very powerful. Again, I'm not going to worry about charting. This is going to be supposedly a, a, uh, a live trading system. But again, don't do this for live trading to bridge it with uh, MATLAB. There's probably smarter, easier ways and faster ways to do it if you really need to get your code uh, trading on the frequency of something like sub-second or tick. Um, but uh, if you're doing minute data or even five minute data, this, this method should be fine. Um, where most people are going to be doing that, but we do get the odd person that gets caught up in the world of buzzy words like high frequency trading. Let's make lots of money. Um, this is kind of method I wouldn't recommend, but there's better ways to do it. Um, but, uh, I, you know, that's pretty advanced stuff. And to be honest, to be able to trade on that level, you better be trading in the seven digit, meaning million, probably five, ten million plus. Talk to you later.